How's that done? How's that? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Can you hear me, Don? Can you? Yep, yes. Yes, I think. Yes, yes, yes. Good. Well, good morning, friends. We haven't, we haven't quite got a news conference set up this morning, but we're still a bit all over the shop with the, uh, with the technology. Hence, you've got a hymn book because I decided I wasn't going to take the risk of the listening song working because I suspect that it probably won't. Um, so we're going to sing a hymn after the reflection instead of... The, the listening song. Um, in many faith traditions, September is used as the season of creation, a time to remember and be amazed by the wonderful creation that we see around us, above us and within us, both in the microcosm and the macro. At St Margaret's, we're focusing over the next four Sundays on flora and fauna this week, the cosmos next week when we're in the small hall. So I figured in a small space, let's focus on something really big. Um, climate and creation out under the uh, flowering cherry tree, which may or may not still be flowering by that stage, given the pace spring is uh, advancing at this year. And finally, in the first Sunday of, of October, a communion service and celebrating the blessings that creation and the cosmos bring us. So may the whole process over the next four weeks bring us closer to God and closer to our creation as we worship and reflect. For our acknowledgement of country, I want to do it in two parts. <laughs> The first part is you all received a eucalyptus leaf when you came in, which I and my group of um, short messengers uh, walked the dog and picked some leaves in the Stirling Avenue Reserve last night. I'd invite you to have a look at that leaf, scrunch it up and smell it if you want to, just think about where it takes you, what, what memories are raised in you by a eucalyptus leaf. Scrunch the end of it and smell the eucalyptus if you like, or just think about where you've seen beautiful eucalyptus. I'm not asking anybody to attempt to play it. Um, My reason for asking you to do that is that smells and sounds and shapes and especially, especially smells take us to places and remind us of, of things. 
and I think in some way smelling a eucalyptus leaf and thinking, where does this leaf take me? What does it remind me of? Gives us perhaps some small link to our First Nations people and their connection with the land where the smells and what was blooming and what was happening in the sky and so on guided their whole life and their search for food, etc. And I think that's a really good way of acknowledging country. Secondly, I'd like to pray a prayer written by Sherry Balcom of the Victorian Catholic Aboriginal Ministry. The National Council of Churches in Australia has asked us this, this weekend to focus on themes of unity and reconciliation, hope and healing as it's five weeks out from the um, referendum on, on the voice. So as the second part of our acknowledgement of country, I'd like to ask you to share with me in this prayer. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we pray for a bright and just shared future for all who call Australia home. We ask that your grace of acceptance and compassion will guide us. Let the Creator Spirit lead our journey with the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples of this land. May we share your spirit more deeply. May we celebrate the gifts you have given us. Help us appreciate the true harmony and peace, just as our old people did. Keep us strong, make us resilient, and remember us in this time, for now we have an opportunity to change our nation's history for the better. Walk with us as we enter into new chapters and may we be one in your love. Amen. John, would you like to bring us our notices? Good morning. As, as Simon mentioned, we're in the small hall for worship uh, next Sunday at, at 10.30, but that's because Holy Cross have their patronal festival, their 60th anniversary festival, which is starting at 9.30 in the church and includes the bishop and other dignitaries and uh, confirmations and all sorts of bells and smells um, and, uh, and, and our Good Faith Choir will be participating in that uh, worship um, uh, so a lot of St Margaret's people will be in that service and then after the service there will be a lunch in the hall celebrating the 60th anniversary with guests from all over um, people who've had an association with Holy Cross over the decades um, and Don and Margaret will be there as honoured guests for their um, association with, with, um, with Holy Cross. Uh, um, but, but the point is you are all actually invited to that lunch. Um, Holy Cross would love as many people to go to the lunch uh, as want to go and as well of course you, you you don't have to come to our 10.30 service. You can be all the time in the, in the um, Holy Cross service if, if, if you want the Bishop and the Bells and Smells um, and the Good Faith Choir. Um, <laughs> so, so, but, but the point is, if you're going to lunch, um, it would be, Holy Cross would like to know so they can cater. And they're also wanting people who can volunteer to bring along a dish. Um, so I will ask people at morning tea um, if, if you're going or not. Um, and yes. But then the next service is a joint service on the 24th of September 
Um, Amy um, is, Juna has been doing wonderful stuff in preparing that liturgy. Um, it's going to be a great service. It, and, and although there won't be as many blossoms, it also means there'll be less bees. So that, that's a good thing. Um, um, so that will be at 9.30 as normal. This time we're with Holy Rosary as well as Holy Cross. And um, again, we'll, we'll have a, a nice morning tea after the service. But also on the Saturday night, we are having a... Um, um, a Kiribati Connection concert at which uh, the Ramon children will be um, singing and, and, and dancing and um, we're also hoping the Papua New Guinea Choir will be there so it will be a great, a great weekend we hope and that's it thank you No, you'd better not take my notes, John. I would be rushing after you. Um, also, Friday night is Fork and Talk. If you're going to Fork and Talk, can you let Kay Beaton know and negotiate with her as to what you want to bring? Our call to worship, please join with me. In desert and bushland, mountain and water, we see the signs that God is with us. In grass that grows through cities of concrete and brick, we see the signs that God is with us. In the faces of the people whom God so loves, we see the signs that God is with us. In our brokenness, there is the hope of wholeness. In our emptiness, there is the hope of fullness. In our death lies the hope of resurrection life. This is the word in Christ to us. The flame of the Holy Spirit lives in this place and travels with us. Amen. For our first hymn, we're going to sing An Abundant World, which you know because it's to the tune of There's a Light Upon the Mountains. And I thought that its images of possums, crabs, rosellas and magpies are very apt for our celebration of flora and fauna. So let's sing.
No mention in there, Simon, of the goats that we saw last week. Thousands of goats. We saw feral goats along the roadsides out towards Broken Hill. Anyway, we join now in our prayers of praise and thanksgiving and confession. <clears throat> Lord God of us all, gathered in this place holding hope amidst despair, we offer you our praise and thanks and we make our confessions. Loving God, gathered in this church and via Zoom and coming to prayer, we recognise your greatness and seek the safety, security, care, compassion and love that you provide. We see the signs that you are with us. <coughs> we know that the flame of the Holy Spirit lives in this place and travels with us. Cherished God, gathering in hopefulness this morning, we sense serenity. We walk hand in hand, thankful for the many blessings you generously offer to us. Provider God, we are very aware of those for whom every day brings much despair. We bring our doubts and our longing to have them relieved. We bring our pain and our longing to be comforted. Thanks, John. Singing about your world's abundance has reminded us that there is so much wondrous life for us to enjoy. We give you our thanks. Lord, we have much to confess. We sometimes worry too much about so many things. We worry about what lies ahead for us and our families. We worry about the impacts of the economic situation, about the impacts of climate change, about the impacts of the changing world order. We know that despite the importance of all those things, we sometimes perhaps need to focus more on the positives in our world. So we confess our failure to properly balance the good and not so good things about our lives. Our failure to properly appreciate the good things that others might not have. Our tendencies to complain about the disappointments and difficulties in our lives more than giving thanks for our blessings that you provide. Lord of all, we ask you to assist us to do better, to always be grateful for the good and positive things about our lives, about the good times we share with friends, the good times we have when holidaying, the good times enjoying life's pleasures. Blessed Lord, Knowing that you forgive us for our sins and filled with gratitude for that forgiveness, for the many blessings we receive from you, for the fresh good opportunities you provide to us, we give you our thanks. Living in the knowledge of your forgiveness and your love, we remind ourselves once more of the words of assurance we have already sung this morning. There's a world that's full of wonder so much life for us to see as what Jesus tried to teach us go and live abundantly Amen Thank you Brian Now, I don't know whether there are any children who'd like to come and listen to a story. And the large children will be able to follow it on the screen. Okay, I'll wait, Fred, no worries. This is a book called Under the Love Umbrella. Do you like umbrellas? Yep. I do a tower. 
You've got a car one, haven't you? Yes. You broke your blue umbrella. Oh dear. Oh dear. Okay, let's read this one. There are lots of umbrellas inside this book. Can you help us find them all? Up in the sky, amongst the stars, there's something you might not see. Yes. But over your head and just above, there's an umbrella of my love to show you I'm thinking of where, sorry, to show it's you I'm thinking of wherever you might be in deepest dark when big dogs bark or waves crash loud is that a shark when friends won't share and things aren't fair there's always my love umbrella when everything is strange and new on days when you need super glue there's so much room here just for you under my love umbrella. Bad dream, lost tooth, smashed toy, big worry, your pants are wet, you're meant to hurry. It disappears in a big old flurry under the love umbrella. Whatever you fear, come close, my dear, you're tucked in safe for always here. And I will never not be near holding our love umbrella. In every weather, it's us, together. My love for you goes on forever. Be still, breathe deep. Whenever you sleep, you're under my love umbrella. Up in the sky, among the stars, there's something you might not see. Fireworks. Fireworks, yes. But over your head and just above, there's an umbrella of my love to show it you I'm thinking of, wherever you might be. And then the question at the end, who's under your love umbrella? And I thought what you might like to do, because you have lots of people who love you, don't you? Yeah. I thought you might like to, while the grown-ups sing and do some other things, you might be able to draw a couple of pictures of who's under your love umbrella. Because I'm sure, I think David's fr David Hunt's fridge might be getting a bit empty and need an, another picture to go on the door. And I know Paul and Jeanette would love a picture for their fridge. So do you reckon you can do that? Have a think about who's, in your, who's under your love umbrella? Um, like my mum. Like your mum and yeah, all those people you can draw. Okay, off you go. Thank you. There's something about children's books, I reckon, about good children's books. Our offering hymn is Resurrection All Around Us to the tune of Ode to Joy. It's almost a hymn for spring, and the gardeners among us, I know, can see signs of resurrection everywhere. And if you're the person who mows the lawns, at the moment you can almost literally sit there and watch the grass grow. So let's sing.
Holy One, we bring these gifts and we ask you to receive our lives, our talents and all that we are as an expression of worship and love to you and your creation. In your name, amen. And friends, the God who gives us those gifts, the God of resurrection life, the peace of that Lord be with you. Peace be with you. Let's share the peace. Just before Anne comes and brings us our readings, I wanted to very briefly introduce why I've chosen the readings, because they're not the standard lectionary readings for this week. The first one is a lectionary reading, but it's an alternate lectionary reading from Psalm 119, which, as I'm sure you know, is the longest psalm in the Psalms. And it was originally designed to be sung. Now, I thought of that, but I thought we didn't have two hours um, in order to sing the whole 176 verses of the psalm. But it was originally designed to be sung, and it was also a play on words. Each, each of the eight lines of the verses starts with a different Hebrew letter, and they go right through the alphabet. Um, the story is that William Wilberforce, the great um, English politician and anti-slavery um, campaigner, had memorised Psalm 119. And if he'd had an especially bad day in Parliament, he would walk home, rather than catching a, a hackney cab or a, or a carriage or, or whatever, and he would recite Psalm 119 to himself because it's a prayer about people who delight in God and who get joy from their faith. The second reading I chose is reading from the prophet Habakkuk. Habakkuk is one of the prophets that we know almost nothing about. Basically, we know his name and not, and not much else. There's conjecture as to where he lived, there's conjecture as to when he lived, etc., etc. Um, there is some thought that he was linked to, to Elisha, but they're not really sure about that. But the reason I chose him is that Habakkuk is unusual amongst the prophets in that rather than saying this terrible thing is going to happen to you, Habakkuk he talks to God through this and says, God, why are you letting this happen? All this stuff is happening. What's going on? Why are you doing this? And then at the end, we have those, those wonderful verses, which, you, which I'll refer to a little bit later, where Habakkuk says, amidst all the destruction amidst everything going wrong, still I will rejoice in the Lord. I'll rejoice in the God of my salvation. So that's, that's why I chose those two 
in our, in our sort of our theme of finding hope amidst despair. So Anne, would you bring us those readings? Our first reading comes from Psalm 119, verses 33 to 40. Teach me your decrees, O Lord. I will keep them to the end. Give me understanding, and I will obey your instructions. I will put them into practice with all my heart. Make me walk along the path of your commands, for that is where my happiness is found. Give me an eagerness for your laws rather than a love for money. Turn my eyes from worthless things and give me life through your word. Reassure me of your promise made to those who fear you. Help me abandon my shameful ways for your regulations are good. I long to obey your commandments. Renew my life with your goodness. The next reading is from Habakkuk. The prophecy that Habakkuk, the prophet, received. How long, Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen, or cry out to you, violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tell, tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. Therefore, the law is paralyzed and justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is perverted. I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks at the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. For it will surely come, it will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous live by their faith. I heard and my heart pounded, my lips quivered at the sound. Decay crept into my bones and my legs trembled. Yet I will wait patiently for the day of calamity to come on the nation invading us. Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, Though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food. Though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Saviour. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. This is the word of our Lord. Thank you, Anne, for those wonderful words. So how do we hold hope amongst the litany of doom and despair? that the climate crisis is unleashing upon us. Amid the scenario of weather records being broken, how do we look forward? I think that the West Australian writer and illustrator Sean Tan expressed it wonderfully in his picture book, The Red Tree. Let's read it. It will be on the screen, but I'll read it also because the sound is not working properly. Okay, 
The Red Tree by Sean Tan. Oop. Hang on, we've gone the wrong... No, it's not working? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll have to read it to you. You'll have to put your long glasses on. <laughs> Sometimes the day begins with nothing to look forward to. And things go from bad to worse. Hang on, we might have... Lift off. The first slide is very slow because there's It's worth it. Sometimes the day begins with nothing to look forward to. And things go from bad to worse. Darkness overcomes you. Nobody understands. The world is a deaf machine. without sense or reason. Sometimes you wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. And wait but nothing ever happens. Then all your troubles come at once. Wonderful things are passing you by. Terrible fates are inevitable. Sometimes you just don't know what you're supposed to do or who you're meant to be or where you are. And the day seems to end.
the way it began. But suddenly, there it is. right in front of you, bright and vivid, quietly waiting. Just as you imagined it would be. So how do we find our own red tree? In our beautiful surroundings here in North Canberra, we're blessed with an abundance of beautiful trees. I've often thought that trees somehow have an ability to affect our psyche. They seem to have an effect on us which is far more than just recognition of something that's beautiful and has purpose. There's just something about a lovely tree, isn't there? The Japanese practice of Shinrin-yoku, translated as forest bathing or taking in the forest atmosphere, has been studied extensively and has, and has provided the science to support what we innately know that time spent immersed in nature is good for us. Trees remind us of the connection to the generations that have gone before us and our commitment to those who will come after us. In his study of the role of trees in the Bible, Matthew Sleuth points out that trees are used to teach short-lived humanity about time on a vaster scale. Sleuth also comments, other than God and people, the Bible mentions trees more than any other living thing. There is a tree on the first and last page of Genesis. There's a tree in the first Psalm. There's a tree on the first page of the New Testament and on the last page of Revelation. Every significant theological event in the Bible seems to be marked by a tree. And every major character in the Bible seems to appear in conjunction with a tree. So what can we learn from trees on this Sunday where we're thinking about flora and fauna? and holding hope amidst despair. Because surely if our study of God points us to trees, then hopefully the reverse is also true. By thinking about trees, we can start to understand a little bit more of the nature of the creator. After all, science is one of the ways that we can use to enter into a closer relationship with a God of a mysterious creation. As researcher Steve Talbot puts it, nature is speaking and science is one sort of translation of that language. 
So what does science have to tell us about the trees that form a forest in the word of God? What does the study of creation reveal about the voice of creation? In his best-selling book, The Hidden Life of Trees, Peter Walburn attempts to synthesise the latest science about trees. And I just want to draw out one of his conclusions. He talks about the fact that trees in forests are profoundly social beings. Strong trees use interconnected root systems to transfer nutrients to sick ones until they are able to recover. Trees that are under attack from pests use vast underground fungal webs to send warnings to other trees, enabling them to begin to release defensive compounds. The beech tree even synchronises its rate of photosynthesis with those trees around us so that those who find themselves in ideal growing conditions don't leave their less fortunate neighbours literally for dead. The trees, it seems, Walgren says, are equalising differences between the strong and the weak. Whoever has an abundance of sugar hands some over. Whoever is running short gets help. And of course, these behaviours aren't motivated by ideology. Instead, they reflect a natural logic because the forest is a delicate ecosystem. If a tree dies, that ecosystem is disrupted. Light streams through the gap in the canopy, the temperature on the forest floor rises and water evaporates. The reasons are the same for human communities. There are advantages to working together. So it shouldn't be surprising that Isaiah prophesies the beginning, uh, sorry, prophesies the coming of Jesus by saying a small tree will begin to grow. Because the glory of interconnectedness is one of the central messages of our faith. We are a community religion, despite the fact that our faith is an individual faith and that's been focused on so much, the reality is that Jesus' message was to change communities. The building of community is where we build the kingdom that Jesus so often spoke about. As we continue to learn from the scientists about the urgency of this moment of climate change and environmental crisis, Perhaps we can learn from trees. Perhaps we can learn that as we battle the climate emergency, we need to build community. Because it is in community that we can find the strength to carry on. It's in community that we can find the courage to act. It's in community that we can, with Habakkuk, say, yet will I rejoice in the Lord, I'll rejoice in the God of my salvation, for God alone is my strength. Community can be our red tree. Perhaps we also need to think about creating our own Shinrin-yoku forest bathing practice. The poet, writer and environmentalist Christine Sign puts it this way. If you sit long enough in a quiet place, the peace of God will invade your being. Breathe softly. Don't move. Allow the presence of the Holy One to fill you. Open the doors of your heart Dissolve the barriers in your head. Destroy the bars that imprison your soul. Sit still. 
welcome God into the sacred centre of your soul. I trust that this week your journey will be full of red trees. Amen. And rather than a listening song, we're going to sing from the hymn book, number 473, Community of Christ. If you haven't got a hymn book, if you give Keith and Judy a wave, I'm sure they'll deliver one to you. John Ruskin said, if you do not wish for his kingdom, don't pray for it. But if you do, you must do more than pray for it, you must work for it. I wonder if there are things in your lives or in the lives of our community that you want to identify now. We pray for the Kellys. Do we know how Pam and John are? Starting to walk around? Great. Thank you. Okay. Great. So John, John hopes to be home sometime in this, in this next week, which will, be, which will be great. In our prayer cycle, we're asked to remember the countries of Ghana and Nigeria, two of the most populous countries and two of the larger countries in Africa. And in our local presbytery, we're asked to remember Gangalan. For our prayers after our choir introduces, I'm going to do it as a responsive prayer as we use the Lord's Prayer as a framework for our prayers. So, let's pray.
if you read with me the bold lines. Our Father in heaven, our God present in all life, within and around us, creator of heaven and earth, who originates, sustains, redeems and completes the whole of reality, and yet who also is a loving parent, bringing us into deep relationship with yourself and with the rest of your good creation, we come before you this morning. Lord, hear our prayer. Hallowed be your name. We recognise you as the spirit of holiness and wholeness in the world. We ask that your name become holy in and through and amongst us as we commit to a new way of holy living that is mindful of acting justly, loving mercy, treading lightly upon the earth and walking humbly with you, our God. Lord, hear our prayer. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray for the fulfilment of your will so that the signs of God's kingdom can be clearly seen. A kingdom where there is peace, harmony and equality amongst humans and creatures. A kingdom where your creation is valued preserved, nourished and cared for, a kingdom where we are strengthened by God to live faithfully on this earth, building sustainable communities with foundations of right relationships and living in harmony with nature. Lord, hear our prayer. Give us today our daily bread Help us to take care of our earth garden so that all living things will have food, water, shelter and a chance to develop to their full potential. Help us to be content with a simpler life, being thankful for your gifts to us of what we need. Help us not to be consumed by a desire for more and more recognising instead the importance of generous sharing with those less fortunate than ourselves and the need for equality among all. Lord, hear our prayer. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Forgive us our idolatrous human-centredness Forgive us for our contribution to the inequity of the world's nations and all the problems leading from that imbalance. Forgive us our blindness to the interconnectedness of all living things and our apathy and unwillingness to make changes to restore your world. Relieve us of our greed and our desire to exploit the earth's resources and guide us into a right relationship with all your creation. Lord, hear our prayer. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. There are many trials upon us now, Lord. The COVID-19 pandemic effects are still being felt across the globe. Weather events brought about by climate change bring destruction and death. Wars and violence and terrorism ruin families, communities, countries and our common good. Illness in all its forms affects and constrains those we know and love. In spite of our complicity in not loving our neighbours as ourselves, we ask that you would preserve us, save us and keep us. 
enabling us to shine as lights, following Jesus the light in a darkening world. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. We praise you, O God, sustainer of all the universe. For you, our loving creator, life force of all of reality, our saviour and our Lord, you alone are our source and sustenance forever and ever. We pray that we may love what you love and that we will not only pray but live, giving our lives to your praise and glory, creating us the desire to live in harmony with creation so that all creatures may flourish and that your kingdom may come. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. And our final hymn, I'd invite you to stand as you are able, is called Spirit of Love, a Shirley Murray hymn, and it uses the image of a weaver combining everything into threads of community. So friends, as you travel into this week, may we see God's love reflected in our common home. May we be energised to see God's image in all creation. Let us see God's joy in the bouncing kangaroo, God's peace in the placid koala, God's patience in the mighty humpback, humpback whale, God's kindness in the quizzical quokka. God's goodness in the glories of a rainbow lorikeet. God's faith in the ancient cassowary. God's gentleness in the leafy sea dragon. And God's self-control in the saltwater crocodile. So let us go now with the fruits of the spirit and with all creation and leave in truth and justice and love and hope. Amen.